Hey guys, Andrew here. You guys requested it, and now it's finally here. Some budget decks. For those of you who are just getting started with the game, or don't want to spend too much money on it. In general, these decks should be quite easy to obtain, given all the freebies that you're given at the start of the game. Now, rush decks, as always, don't require too many fancy super rares. The first list that I have here includes some old favorites such as Fire Break Claw and also Top the Oracle. There are also a couple of new additions in Zap Ramba, the sword attacker who's a 2 mana 1k that becomes a 3k creature while you have available mana, which should be most of the time anyway. We're also playing more 3 mana speed attackers in Rickaboo. A new Firebird Rickaboo that has the exact same effect, and also this guy, the new Bloody Winds Officer, who's really just an overstated um, 3 mana Rickaboo having 3.5k power, and his drawback isn't really one that your opponent is going to abuse. All in all, this deck only really has 4 Fairy Rares and the Holy Ores, with all the other cards really easy to obtain. Definitely should give this one a go. Nice, so perfect start. Easily play Top the Oracle on turn one and right into Lady Fighter Break 4 and Top the Oracle the turn after. So that lets you what, break one shield from Tulk and then another three shields the turn after. Wow. And here's the uh, new Rickaboo. Just when you thought that they didn't print enough 3 mana 1k speed attackers, it's another one. So now you can run 8 Rickaboops if you really wanted to. Break. Hope no tricks. Again, the uh, bane of all aggressive decks is breaking into Arcosephor early or any sort of shield trigger, really. But yeah, this, um, this deck you can almost craft straight out of the gate as most of these cards are commons and uncommons so with the freebies that you do get at the start of the game you should be able to make this quite easily. Alright let's play with Rukubu. I think the theme and the reason why they were uh, printing all these firebird cards is because of Death Phoenix and Soul Phoenix and all the um, Vortex evolutions that have come out in the new set. Do stay tuned, I do have a spicy list uh, for your <laughs> Death Phoenix. I know our friend uh, Doug is going to be quite excited for that one. Yeah, so Death Phoenix is probably the flavor of the month at the moment. You'll see a lot of them running around, like what our opponent's playing. Oh no, it's Boltail. Uh, I guess he's a dragon. So he could play his Death Phoenix if he wanted to, but I don't see much point in can just kill off all my creatures here. This is actually not looking too good here. Oh, that Boltail actually really did make a difference because he couldn't kill off all my creatures before, but now he can. And this just makes it extremely hard for me to break his last shield and try to finish the game. Mm. I saw um, Sasabo the other day play a variant of the stick, but he ran two copies of uh, Apocalypse Day, which was a new uh, light shield trigger spell that um, once there's more than five creatures, I believe, on the field, or five or six creatures on the field, then you get to destroy all creatures on the board. So it's a six mana light spell shield trigger. Um, and I thought, you know, for situations like these when your opponent doesn't really want to break your shields, he's uh, kind of developing a board, a card like that might be quite good. Over here, Simps. Striker Ball Razor, as good as he is, um, doesn't quite match up when your opponent has a board. And my opponent's just gonna keep spamming this blocker. Mm. Not looking good. Oh, so that's uh, quite a unique dragon that's pretty powerful at the moment. 
He's a 4 mana armored dragon, so one of the cheapest armored dragons in the game right now. He lets you search a firebird. As you can see, they obviously had the, uh, the whole Phoenix Vortex Evolution idea in their mind when they, when they designed this card. Um, as you get your firebird, and then there's also this other firebird. Oh no, it's, it's that 2 mana one on the field. Um, that lets you search for a phoenix and put it on the top of your deck. So as you can see, those synergies work really well. And you can pull off Death Phoenix a lot more easier than you could back in the TCG. Let's see if my opponent um, plays one. Okay, so he's just going for blocker spam. All these uh, slip strikers are not doing me well. Well, holy or uh, only three mana. That came a bit later. Maybe I could do something with it. I think my only hope is really for him to break into holy or, and then I speed attack the rook. I think that's the only win condition I have left. Ah, so here's the the phoenix that didn't get released in the TCG. Not his name, but he's really strong. He, I think when you play him, you get to destroy a creature that's 12k or less. Um, and then when he dies, oh, there's his death phoenix. Uh, you return all fire cards or fire creatures from your graveyard to your hand. Well, speaking of Rickaboo, here's, uh, here's Rickaboo. Hmm. I just need him to break into Holy Or. That'll give me the way in. But this doesn't look like. Yeah, damn. I think what he's gonna do is just attack with Death Phoenix only, and Death Phoenix um, destroys your shields like Volmedius. Damn, he's playing the super lame way. Uh, I guess you do whatever you do to win. Damn, why do you play like this? Just break into my holy awe. Just break my last shield. Give me a chance. Oh my gosh, she's just gotta play super lame. Alright. You win this one. The second deck is our Wave Dragons list, which is a slight variation on the list that I covered a few weeks ago. Instead of fire, we're running light to maximize our two cost wave strikers, as those are the ones that we really want to get out on time. As you can see, aside from the full terra pits, the rest of the deck is filled with wave strikers, which are all quite easy to obtain. The four copies of Gajila can also easily be replaced by more copies of Saliva Pump and Ninja Pumpkin. I've really come to love playing this deck, you really do get some really fast games, and playing down a creature every turn just makes it feel so smooth to play. So as you remember, Macho Melon is now a double breaker, 2 mana 2k as well. Um, it's possibly probably my favorite card at the moment. This, this deck is just so consistent. Um, every turn you have something to play. In, it runs enough 2 mana cards and 3 mana cards that you have something to play on 2 mana and 3 mana uh, respectively. And those turns are especially crucial for a deck like this, as you do need again, the magical number of 3 Waste Strikers for your effects to activate. 
Uh, let's go ahead and play a Sora here. And what you want to do is, even when you are you don't have three, three wave strikers on the field, you do want to still break. As you can imagine, um, if he doesn't have a short trigger here, next turn you can break all the shields. <laughs> this really does make for some really, really fast games. Ah, okay, so my opponent does play some destruction, but not to worry. Ah, my favorite boy is back. This is just insane. Now uh, it's, what, turn three? And my opponent is down to two shields. <laughs> I can curve right into Gajula next turn. Oof. I almost feel how strong this deck really is. Hope you guys have as much fun as I'm having with this deck at the moment. Climb up the ladder so fast as well. Alright, let's see. So that card was the um, Mystery Totem, I believe is his name. You draw a card for each uh, different race you have on the field. It's quite a slow card, but when pulled off correctly, it can give you quite a good uh, card advantage. So here's Gajula on curve, so that cuts down his hand size in half. And then double break with Macho Melon. Uh, tricks, tricks, tricks. No tricks. And that's game. So there we have it. Last but not least, we have a somewhat more expensive deck list. For those of you who do have a bit of extra time, this is something that's definitely easily obtainable. So th this deck list features none other than Warlord Alzonius, which effects remains the same as in the TCG. High mana Gladiator Evolution, your opponent can't choose this creature. So no Terra Pets, no Aqua Surfers. The real cost of the deck comes in the four copies of Astral Reef are essential for this deck as Astral Reef really does enable you to be the aggressive uh, one early on. Otherwise the other card I wanted to quickly touch upon is Guardian of Sacred Birds and Crystal, a 3 mana nature slash water spiral gate type effect that allows you to search a creature that costs the same or less than the creature that you just spiral gated. And with the prevalence of your new Vortex Evolutions, this is one easy way to get rid of them. Hope you guys have fun with this one. I wanted to showcase some of the newer cards in the expansion, uh, and that being Warlord Alzonius. Although this deck really does play out more like an Astral Reef Rush deck, as you've seen before, uh, but with more of a Warlord Alzonius flavor to it. So you play cards like Bronze Arm and Poisonous Mushroom, so you can play out your Warlord Alzonius as soon as possible. But if that doesn't work, you've still got your Attackers and Astral Reef, Hulkus and whatnot. So it looks like, from judging from the sand, I'm playing Mono Water. Um, and I wonder what our opponent's playing. He's just charged with a few uh, Terra Pits. I oh, they used to charge the uh, Firebird, so it seems like he's playing some of the Death Phoenix, although that card is quite strange. So that card, when you play it, uh, you get to return a shield to your hand, which in most circumstances you would ask, you know, why would you do that? Um, but for aggressive decks, since your opponent doesn't really break your shields anyway, um, you can use it as a form of card draw. Should I say shield draw? <laughs> Belix. Belix sometimes comes in quite clutch. You often charge your holy ores early, and then uh, later in, on in the game, um, especially when your opponent you know doesn't have that many shields left, you can play Belix and get your holy ore back. Uh, here's our friend again. He's probably one of the most broken cards at the moment. 
such as a firebird, and he's also a dragon, so he sets up so nicely for your uh, their phoenix. Or the other phoenixes. Let's go ahead and speed attacker our astral reef here. So that 3 mana 4k blocker is like a bloody squeedo. So he does die if he blocks. Although he is a Necro Dragon, so I guess that's the reason why you can play him. Otherwise, why would you not just play Bloody Squeedo? <laughs> it's two mana. Mm, I don't know if I should break here. I can push, but then he'll just kill off all my creatures uh, with his board. Alternatively, I can wait. Um, yeah, so that, that card gets I'll attack the 1k for each of his firebirds, so it's not really worthwhile attacking because he can just kill off my Astral Reef for free there. See if he just plays his uh, Death Phoenix here. No, he doesn't. That's the firebird that searches the uh, Phoenix, puts it at top of his deck. The next turn, he's going to play out his Death Phoenix. Which is not, per not bad because I have the Garden of Sacred Bird or something, whatever it's called, that can return the uh, Death Phoenix. I think I'll uh, play it here so I can start breaking. Should I play it on his blocker or should I play it on his dragon? So if I play it on his dragon, then he can't evolve. Oh no, he can just evolve on Necro, so I'll just play it on the blocker. Is our first gladiator that we drew, which is quite nice actually, because now if we draw Wall of Alzonius, I can speed attack her. One pretty, pretty uh, unique thing about Wall of Alzonius is you want to break with your creatures that are not Wall of Alzonius first, because uh, remember your opponent can't target Wall of Alzonius, so no matter what, he's most likely going to get his attack off. Unless you break into something like Holy War, of course. He's down to one shield now. But he can kill off my creatures, so this is going to be close. Especially if he plays out some blockers. Uh, definitely not a done deal here. He plays out a blocker, but that's not too bad for me, because I can just play the uh, Garden of Birds. Deal with that. Alternatively, if I draw Wall of Alzonius, I can just easily play it. It's gonna attack into Marco Hocus. Yep. So this this game really does um, reflect the power of Astral Reef at the moment. You really see that this, without it you do really run out of steam quite fast, but with it um, just have a consistent uh, draw power throughout the game. Cool, let's just probably get that back. Left blocker. Break. Now, if he does play the other Phoenix, uh, the the fire one, then he can clear my board and potentially do something to turn after. But we'll see. I think I have this one in the bag. Be put. I guess he didn't put anything. Oh, here we go. Here's our Fire Phoenix. It's not too bad, because I can just play out all my little guys next turn. Weenies. Oh, and here's Belix. So the Holy Oak combo I talked about uh, before. 
is the application. With bronze arm. I just, I'll just use bronze arm to charge mana for me. Got the bronze arm. Play out the blocker, I think. Now I'm gonna just play out the person in the last room because it can attack. Cool. Say go. Wonder if you play something like burst shot. I don't see it as common anymore. You just you just got so many other cards that you have to play that you can't run cards like burst shot anymore. You just don't have space. Oh, you play some Galsock as well. Uh, that's uh, not enough. You need to recheck your maths. Three is greater than two. Oh, and uh, two holy ores for great for good measure. 